I 3D printed a functional electric guitar and in this video I'm going to show you the entire build process from start to finish so you can make one too. Hi everybody and welcome to the 3D Print Zone. This channel is dedicated to 3D printing projects, tutorials, reviews, and time lapses like these. So several years back, I decided to combine two of my hobbies, which are 3D printing and guitar, and I made a 3D printed guitar that was functional, but it did have a few issues, including flexing and going out of tune pretty easily. So I decided to incorporate all the learnings from the previous guitar and make the guitar that you see here. Now, before you even ask, yes, all of the STL files for this guitar are gonna be made available for download, and if you're interested to learn more about the project and purchase the files, then you can check out the 3dprintzone.com for more information. I also have several other guitar designs available, so make sure to check those out as well. If you enjoy the build, then please consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a like. And if you have any questions or comments, then make sure to leave those in the comments section below. So without further ado, let's get started. To print the body of the guitar, I split the model into four sections so that it could be printed on a vast majority of home 3D printers. In my case, I'm printing on a Prusa MK3S Plus, which has a build area of 210 by 210 millimeters. For all of the parts, I used Amazon Basics White PLA for the filament. I used Prusa Slicer to slice the model with 25% cubic infill. If you're looking for an even stronger and heavier guitar, you can certainly increase this value but keep in mind the print time and amount of filament used will increase quite a bit. For supports, I use build plate only supports to accommodate overhangs and bridging. I found that using two perimeters was enough, but you can increase this number if you're looking for additional strength. As for speeds, I use 20 millimeters per second for the first layer, 45 millimeters per second for the perimeters, 80 millimeters per second for infill, 50 millimeters per second for supports, and 180 millimeters per second for travel. The top section had a total print time of 17.6 hours using 280 grams of filament, costing approximately $7.10. The middle section had a total print time of 32.1 hours using 527 grams of filament, costing approximately $13.37. The left section had a total print time of 16 hours using 274 grams of filament, and costing approximately $6.96. And lastly, the right section had a total print time of 16.4 hours using 286 grams of filament, costing approximately $7.26. There's also a small cover for the three-way switch that printed in about 30 minutes and used six grams of filament, costing about 16 cents. If you're doing the math, this totals about 82 hours of print time using 1,373 grams of filament, or about 1.37 rolls, costing approximately $34.85, depending on the brand of filament you use. The guitar body is designed to go together using wooden dowel rods. There are two purposes for the dowel rods. One is to align the parts during assembly, and two, to provide additional stiffness to the 3D printed guitar body. The dowel rods were cut to length using a circular saw, and then the edges were sanded down so that they could be inserted into the 3D printed channels easier. After doing some research online, I decided to use PVC cement to hold the 3D printed sections together because it creates a strong bond as it actually fuses the plastic together. I used a paintbrush to coat both the dowel rods and the 3D printed contact faces with cement, and then push the parts together. I use wood clamps to tightly squeeze and hold the parts together to get a strong bond. There are a few options for adding threads to your 3D printed parts, but I decided to go with brass inserts. To install brass inserts, you undersize the hole and you can simply press them into position using a soldering iron. This takes a bit of practice, so I definitely recommend trying this out on a few test prints before you install them on your 3D printed guitar. The guitar design has two quarter inch poplar wood panels on the top and underside of the guitar. Like the dowel rods, the wood panels are intended to provide additional stiffness to the 3D printed body. To make a stencil for the panels, I saved the CAD files as a DXF and printed the profiles onto 11 by 17 paper with 100% scaling. 
I then used carbon trace paper to transfer the designs to the wood for both the top and bottom panels in order to mark the cut locations for the next step. I used a table saw to rip the panels to the correct width and cut away extra material from the top and bottom so that I can test fit the panels on the 3D printed body. Next, I used a drill to punch out the holes and a jigsaw to cut out the details in the top and bottom panels. For me, this is one of the most difficult steps of the build process and resulted in a few mistakes. All that to say, if you have access to a laser cutter, then I would definitely recommend going this route instead to ensure that you get nice clean cuts, even though it is a more expensive option. I ended up just using some wood glue and clamps to reattach the pieces that snapped off, which worked out pretty well. I then used a paintbrush to apply Minwax polycrylic coating to the outer facing surfaces of the panels. This both protects the wood and gives it a light gloss. In total, I ended up applying four coats and made sure to sand with 220 sandpaper in between the coats. The next step was my favorite part of the build. I've always been fascinated by those awesome epoxy river tables and thought it would be a fun way to both aesthetically give the guitar a unique look while also serving as another method for increasing the stiffness of the body. For this step, you want to make sure your work surface is as level as possible as this is critical to ensuring the resin is flat when it cures. I chose a two-part epoxy made by JB Weld, which is a great option because it is clear and rock solid when it fully cures. I used the CAD model to calculate the volume of resin needed and determined that both the left and right sections required about 8.3 cubic inches of resin, which when added together and converted to milliliters equals about 270 milliliters of epoxy. Therefore, I used about 150 milliliters of part A and 150 milliliters of part B to ensure I had enough material with a little extra just in case. I used black diamond mica powder to give the resin a sparkly colorful look to it, choosing iridescent blue as the main color with a bit of green envy and pure white to give it some additional texture and color dynamic. I chose to mix all the mica powder in the part A resin and made sure to mix the powder really well so that it was uniformly distributed. After adding part B, I thoroughly mixed it all together to ensure the epoxy would cure properly. I have to say that I found it super satisfying to pour the resin into the body and watch it flow into the cavity and then level out. This step is an opportunity to add your own creativity and really change the overall aesthetic of the design. And for this guitar, I decided to give the resin a bit of textured look by using a wooden stick to create a swirl pattern. There's really no right or wrong here. I was mainly just going for a semi-random look and overall I'm really happy with how it turned out. One issue I ran into was a small amount of leakage between the seams. So I would recommend first sealing the seams with more PVC cement or coating them with clear epoxy prior to pouring the rest of the resin. I waited 48 hours to let the epoxy fully cure and I have to say that I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. In addition to being nice and level, the resin added a tremendous amount of strength to the body and visually turned out even better than I was expecting. This is something I definitely plan to experiment with more in the future. I chose to use Gorilla Clear Grip Adhesive to attach the front wood panel to the 3D printed body of the guitar. I applied a generous amount of glue to the wood and pressed it into place. I then used wood clamps to hold the panel tightly to the body and let the glue set for a full 24 hours before removing the clamps. Since this is a Les Paul style guitar, for the electronics it requires two 500K volume knobs, two 500K tone knobs with capacitors, two humbucker pickups, a three-way switch, and an output jack. I quickly found that the potentiometer shafts were not long enough, so I had to dremel away material from the 3D print to allow them to fully extend through the wood so that I can tighten the nut on the other side. Since soldering is not my forte, I decided to purchase a pre-assembled wiring harness to make my life a little bit easier. I followed a Seymour Duncan wiring diagram to determine where everything needed to go. There is a cavity for the three-way switch and a dedicated wire routing channel. It mounts to the body using a nut on the front face of the guitar. Coming off the three-way switch, the red wire was used for the neck and the gray wire was used for the bridge. There is also a long black wire that has a signal and ground that connects to the output jack. 
The pickups I used have four leads. The black is the hot, the green and bare wire is the ground, and the red and white simply get twisted together and taped off with electrical tape. You will also need to add a few ground wires between the pots, as well as one to the bridge to ensure everything is ground properly. I used M3x10 socket head screws to mount the pickups to the body of the guitar. If you're looking for better quality sound, there's definitely an opportunity to use higher quality electronics for your guitar, but luckily these can be swapped out fairly easily in the future if needed. I measured the locations to drill the holes for the back panel screws and drilled them out. I 3D printed some small spacer rings to cover up any misalignment between the wood panel and the guitar body, and I used the same Gorilla adhesive to glue the spacers to the bridge and tailpiece post. I also found that the posts fit slightly too loose, so I added glue while inserting them into the body. The guitar knobs have small set screws on the sides and simply get pressed onto the potentiometer shafts and tightened to secure them in place. The neck is a 22 fret maple neck purchased on Amazon that is black in color to match the guitar hardware. The normal guitar scale for a Les Paul is 24.75 inches, so I lined the neck up to the body and measured to make sure the distance from the nut to the 12th fret and the 12th fret to the bridge were both 12 and 3 eighths of an inch and clamped it in place. I then pre-drilled the location for the neck screws, positioned the neck plate, and bolted the neck to the body of the guitar. Then I installed both the three-way switch cover and wood back panel using M3x10 screws. I had accidentally ordered inline tuning pegs instead of standard tuning pegs, but I decided to use them anyways and just install three of them upside down. Lastly, I slid the tailpiece and bridge onto their respective posts, strung up the guitar, and it was finally ready to play. Out of curiosity, I weighed the guitar and found that it weighs about 7 pounds 6 ounces, which is a bit lighter than a typical Les Paul, which ranges from 9 to 12 pounds. Here are a few shots of the completed guitar, and I have to say that I'm really pleased with how it turned out. There were definitely a few hiccups along the way, but overall I really liked the look of the guitar and learned some valuable lessons for future guitar builds. Now there was nothing left to do but plug it in and see how it plays. As a heads up, please excuse my poor guitar playing skills. I am certainly not the best person to demonstrate the guitar sound quality, but here's me playing a few licks anyways. <laughs>